preview, it, it turns out is quite accessible um, in the uh, X Metal um, in the X Metal script, and so there are several access points where we can get in and and change some things quite easily to make uh, page preview behave the way that we would like. Just to start with, I'd like to show you a, a quick view of uh, a quick peek at what the page preview looks like as sort of a refresher. I do have a sample um, a document type that I'm going to be working with today that um, is uh, just a very simple DTD that I created myself for purposes of doing demos, and I have a very small uh, uh, sample document that I'll be using along with that. So I'm going to open it. So the name of my, the name, name of my DTD is Simple Paper, and I've got a very uh, small <coughs> file here that I'll just open in Excel. Uh, as you can see, I've got the document here. It, it's just very as long as the screen. Um, I've got some CSS styles here um, with my customizations so that I've got red titles and maroon colored text. I've got a little bit of formatting on some elements. These are um, block quote elements, and uh, the rest is it's just a very simple document type with uh, sections, paragraphs, and titles um, pretty much. Um, so when I generate the page preview output in XMetal, uh, when, 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 you or when you have a new document customization with XMetal, the page preview is automatically hooked up to generate a sort of default um, HTML view of the document. So I'll look at that right now, and uh, nice and quick. And so you can see that the styles here in this HTML um, more or less reflect the styles that I had in the document, pretty or inside the uh, editor. I mean, the um, the main exception is that plain text. <coughs> <God>. <coughs> Excuse me. Color plain text nodes is um, is ignored, so I'm just getting the default uh, black colored text for my um, paragraphs. Otherwise, though, picked up styles on titles, picked up styles on the on the block quotes um, and uh, some margins and so on. All right, that's the end of demo number one. So all the code that does that is in um, the in this file that comes with XML called multiple output .cr, which is really um, a, a macro file that was made specifically for this purpose. It, it handles all the stuff that um, that uh, XMetal needs to do for uh, page preview views. The main thing that's happening here, uh, in particular, for generating the page preview the way I just did in this default way with the with the default button, there's an event macro in XMetal called on before document preview, which uh, is implemented in multiple output.mcr. This is an event that fires immediately before XMetal displays the page preview view. Uh, and so what uh, multiple output.mcr does in that macro is it uh, has the existence of XSLT for the page preview, um, and if necessary, will auto generate that XSLT. And so that auto, that, um, and then and then basically runs the XSLT transformation, uh, saving that output to a temp file. And then there's a property in XMetal API called um, Active Document Browser URL, which is set to the value of that temp file. And essentially, this is a property that uh, XMetal uses at the moment it uh, switches to page, to page preview view in order to tell the browser what page it should load. Um, so we run our output, save it to a temp file, and then load that, and then XMetal automatically loads that uh, file into the browser in, in page preview. The XLT that gets generated in this case uh, for the HTML output is actually split into two files. Um, there's one that uh, includes the auto, or the, well, no, I should say the auto-generated um, the auto generated code is only one file, uh, which contains some uh, XSLT code, which automatically applies some, um, creates and does HTML transform with styles based on the CSS in your editor in, in XMetal. Um, and you have the ability to add a custom XSLT file to that, and the capability for picking up that custom XSLT file is built right into uh, our code. So the example we're going to look at is how to uh, create that custom XSLT file, or rather how to get it probably hooked into, uh, into this mechanism. So uh, demo number one is uh, I call it low-hanging fruit. It's the easiest thing you can you can do to uh, customize this HTML output. We're going to assume that you have an XSLT style sheet, so I'm not going to teach you any XSLT today. Um, if you have an XSLT style sheet that uh, will uh, create an HTML version of your content, uh, the only thing you need to do is make sure that style sheet has the right name and then make sure it's put in the right place. 
and uh, that will accomplish the um, that will accomplish your mission. So what you need to do uh, in order to um, uh, the, the name that you need to give it um, depends on the name of your DTD or schema. Um, so XMetal will will down the uh, the file based on on, in, on the uh, on the DTD name. So uh, basically, it's to append the uh, the string HTML custom uh, after the end of your DTD name, and that that's the name style sheet. Since I have simple paper, I have a file called simple paper HTML custom dot XSL that I'm going to be using. And the need to put it is in a special folder where XMetal is going to look for these things. That's kind of an obvious um, smart alecky answer. But um, here's where that folder is. So with XMetal 5.5, I guess it was, when we introduced the limited user um, uh, awareness in XMetal, uh, we now use the um, individual user's application data folder, the Windows folder, as a place where uh, we put the kinds of things that XMetal needs to write during, uh, during the application session. So this folder here is the location where I'll be putting my stuff uh, for the demos, and the, the second bullet here shows that it's my documents and settings, team theory, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera folder. It is possible to turn off those limited users uh, uh, awareness in XMetal through any variables, for example. And if you happen to be running your XMetal in that kind of a mode, then the location of uh, where these um, style sheets uh, and, and related files go is the um, is the same as it would have been in, in, in XMetal in the older days, which is just the display folder underneath the XMetal author directory. One point here is that uh, these two files listed down here at the bottom are two files that XMetal automatically regenerates when it produces output. Uh, in particular, the um, uh, foo underscore HTML file, or simple paper uh, underscore HTML file is the master file that just simply contains a link to um, one to the auto-generated file and your custom file. Um, so if your if these two files already exist and you're just about to go put in a new custom XLT file in there, then you should delete these two files so that they'll get automatically regenerated to include your custom uh, XSLT. More sense when I just do it, so I'm going to just do, do it. Okay, so I'm going to quit XMetal. And here's my demo one. I have this uh, custom XSL file that I've given the proper name, and I, I will give you a quick peek at it for those of you who know your um, XSLT. This um, is really depending on, this is depending on, what I've done for my XSL, XSLT here is simply um, write some templates that will override the templates that are in the auto-generated XSLT. So these templates follow the same structure as those. Um, but because they're going to be loaded later in the XSLT transformation, they're going to uh, they're going to take uh, they're going to take higher priority and override the templates than the auto-generated stuff. Um, you can also uh, tweak that kind of a thing by setting the priority on the templates. Um, I said I wasn't going to teach you any XSLT today. Really, what I opened this file for was to show you that I've put this uh, this bit of text in here, so we confirm that uh, we really are getting uh, this XSLT being used when we generate our output. And I'll copy my clipboard and I'll go to this directory, which is my uh, display folder. I mentioned the one that's under my app data folder, and I'm simply going to paste that here. And um, as required, I'm going to delete these other two files that happen to be lying around in the directory. So that's good. Now I'm going to go back to XMetal and launch uh, and reopen Metal with that file, the same file again. And now I have that custom uh, XSLT in place if I go to page preview view. Ta-da. So we've got some different styles here, quite noticeably uh, different stuff. And most particularly, you can see that my included title is here. That was a success. We're one for one. I like it when demos go well. Demo number two is that we would like to be able to, so, so here's a way that you can um, give the user a little bit of control over this. Sometimes you want to be able to enter page preview uh, by other means than uh, the, than the default uh, clicking on that little um, globe button down at the bottom. Maybe you want to have a user macro that does it, or maybe maybe in the course of some processing you want the, uh, you, you, you need the metal to programmatically switch to uh, page preview mode for some reason. <clears throat> As it turns out, there's some helper script functions defined in multiple output MCR, 
which will help you in this process. Uh, one of these functions is called Preview HTML. So this user macro right here uh, is a macro that will, um, a simple one-line macro that will allow you to um, uh, call that Preview HTML button, which will switch to the HTML preview mode. So let's look at what that looks like. Demo number two. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add an MCR file to my customization. I didn't have one before. It was a very simple customization for my document type. An MCR file contains just the one, uh, the one line of script uh, in this macro that I, um, uh, that I showed you on the slide. The name of this macro is do HTML preview. And so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to add it to my customization. It's a new file, so I didn't have to override anything and relaunch the application yet again and have a new macro on my list, do HTML preview. And if I execute that macro, this is simply going to switch me to plain text view. And by default, it's going to be using those same uh, custom styles that I've, uh, that I've now left in that location. And so I now have I now have user macro for getting to my HTML preview. That one was so quick, it's almost not worth counting the points as, as, as making two two, but but I will anyway. Here's a rundown of the functions that are available in those uh, among those helper functions. We just use preview um, HTML. There's also a preview PDF, which will do the same thing with PDF output, and we'll do that shortly. There are also a couple of functions that let you do a save as HTML uh, and PDF. So this basically uses the same transformations that um, you have uh, in the setup for page preview, but will allow you to uh, it will give you a prompt to uh, to do a save as so you can save that um, HTML or PDF out to a file on your hard drive instead of simply um, having a temp file loaded in your browser. And there are also a couple of setup macros that need to be called. Now I found in my um, working with uh, in my experimentation during um, this uh, preparing for this webinar that the uh, the setup macro uh, or the setup function actually is called in most places that I noticed. Um, already, so there was no need for me to call the HTML setup macro in order to uh, kick off the generation of the style sheets. Um, the purpose of these um, of these two of these two functions is to uh, is to automatically generate those style sheets for you if necessary. Um, but I did find that in one place I did had to use the, um, the PDF setup in order to force the generation of the style sheets when I needed them, and we'll see that in one of my macros in a bit. Okay, so um, here's demo number three. We're basically going to re-implement the same things that we did with HTML just now, except we're going to do it with uh, PDF. So the architecture is very similar uh, at a high-level view to the way HTML works. Uh, the code is in the very same uh, macro in uh, multiple output MCR, this macro um, on before document preview, and it does the same thing. It, uh, it uh, generates the XSLT if necessary, it runs the XSLT transform to produce a temp file, and it tells XMetal the name of that temp file so that when XMetal uh, loads the browser, it knows what uh, what page to browse to. Some other macro here, uh, another one-liner that um, that uh, does my preview PDF, and I'm also going to throw in a custom style sheet um, that uh, will uh, generate some custom styles for my PDF view as well. So it's in one. In one step here, let's close X Metal and move on to demo three. So I've got uh, an updated MCR file, which adds this new uh, PDF um, uh, macro that's the equivalent of my um, HTML macro from before. And I've also got uh, an XSL style sheet for producing H, uh, sorry, PF output. Uh, actually, this is technically this is producing the O output, which is then going to get run by XMetal through uh, uh, FOP as the default processor. So I have this bit of uh, text in here, and we'll add BBB, and that good. So I'm going to take the uh, XSLT file, place it in that old display directory. I'm going to take the MCR file and place it in replay the MCR file now in my uh, customization folder for this uh, document type. And mind you, I'm working with these custom XMetal customizations on uh, it, it just in a folder on my hard drive, 
But this would work just as well if you were working with a project, an XMetal uh, developer, or if you had your um, uh, all these customizations deployed as a Zach. It's all the, the MCR file is, is just the one that goes with your customizations. So I'm working with it here in, uh, in my hard drive just for ease of use during the demo. Relaunch XMetal, same file here. Now I have two different uh, previews that I can do. If I run the HTML preview macro, it's just me with the same old thing as before. I run the PDF preview macro, then generates a PDF, and launch browser with uh, Acrobat Reader here in the um, here in the browser as well. And there's error checking built around this. There's some robustness built into if you start poking around in the code in multiple output MCR, uh, XMetal does some things like, like checking to make sure that Acrobat Reader is installed before it uh, tries to do this kind of a thing. So there is some a bit of, uh, of, of robustness built into this. I just wanted you to see that I managed to make um, the block quotes orange in the PDF, which I was kind of proud of as well. Since I don't know uh, XSLFO too well, I was able to find that. Um, XSLT is one of those things that turns out to be, some people think it's easy and some people think it's, hard, think it's hard, but that's because there are parts of it that are easy and parts of it that are hard. So, okay, um, kind of editorializing. So, um, Right, so this is just uh, what I already said. So the custom, well, I didn't say the name of the file. So the custom style sheet um, that we just copied over was this one, simple paper, custom.xsl, and we went to the same directory. So three for three. Okay, so demo four, I'd like to add a little bit more. Um, I'd like to hook a little bit deeper into what the capabilities are there. So in particular, XMetal actually remembers um, what the, uh, what code you want to be associated with particular document. Uh, and if you're familiar with the data customization, you may uh, you may know that uh, buried in the data options uh, dialog, there's a way, there's a checkbox that lets the user decide whether they want their default um, uh, preview type to always be PDF or to always be HTML. Uh, with XMetal, uh, and I'm running it so far, uh, if I just click on, if I just click on this um, page preview button, Right here, uh, this is always going to take me to HTML, even though I've been doing uh, some PDF output here. Oh, you know what? I've got it. I've got it set to PDF already in my code. Okay, so right now, oh, never mind. It's because of, it's because of the other bar route. Anyway, by default, XMetal has is is, is hardwired to uh, to favor the HTML output as uh, its default output type. But if you'd like to give the user the option of setting that uh, themselves, then this is the way to do it. Basically, there's a global array called um, AMO format that stands for multiple output format, um, which is defined in that multiple output MCR file. And this basically remembers the preview type that you have associated with every document that you have open in XMetal. And what you can do is you can just use this global variable to set your um, uh, to set that value to be HTML or PDF for your current document. And so um, I have a macro called set preview mode to PDF, which is going to allow me, uh, as the user, to um, assign PDF to be my default uh, output type. And I'm going to have another one which does the same thing for um, which does the same thing for um, uh, HTML. So let's just go do that now. Demo number four, and quick peek at the code again. So I'm adding two macros to my system now. So I've got the one that's going to set my preview mode to PDF here, and I've got one that's going to set my preview mode to HTML. So that's great. I'm going to copy that. And here, replacing my older one. And it's metal again. new macros here. Let's set preview mode to HTML and click on my page preview button and I get HTML output. That's all good. And if I set preview mode to PDF, then run my um, uh, page preview again, then I'll get PDF output. Let's just back. I get HTML. Let's set to HTML. Run it again, and I get HTML output. But I actually even see there. I don't know if it came over the WebEx, but for a for just for a split second, uh, the page preview, uh, the br the browser that was loaded in page preview, still had the PDF there um, for a 
for a, just a, a, a very brief instant that you could see before the HTML got um, reloaded into the browser. Okay, so that is demo four. Uh, so that's um, switching, allowing the user basically to switch back and forth between the type that they would like to have uh, for a, a particular document type. And if, and if, you're, and if uh, you'd like to make that permanent, you could even go so far in your code as, as to as to save that current value in some kind of uh, in some kind of config file, so that uh, the next in your next X metal session, um, it, it can read that config file and remember what those um, what that preview mode is is meant to be set to. Make a note at this point that um, the code samples that I've been doing with um, uh, in, in in the examples so far have been have been Unix Metal Author 6.0.1.030, uh, which is the very latest version of XMetal. Uh, I ha happened to discover that um, we actually made some changes to uh, some of the code in multiple output MCR in this particular version, which did affect some of these samples. It's uh, only some slight reworking, but if you are using a, an older version of XMetal, um, you, you may need to do a couple of things slightly differently than what have done here. So the high level view is the same but a couple of the lines of code end up being different. Um, in particular, in one case, you needed to set, uh, to call, there's there's one place where you need to call that um, setup function uh, that I mentioned um, that um, that I that I didn't need to because I was using XML, uh, the latest version of XML. Okay, so that concludes the part of an R when we talk, where we talk about uh, customizing your page preview with XSLT, but of course, XSLT is not the only way that you can generate output um, with uh, with XML to produce some different forms of output. It's just the way that XMetal uses as its default way, uh, and, and we have this, this framework built around it in the uh, multiple output.mcr. Um, but uh, it's possible that some people don't want to use um, XSLT. In this case, this is going to show you. Uh, so, so we're going to talk now about how to um, how to uh, do things differently. It basically just involves getting. Uh, um, uh, Slightly more into the code. Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to replace that on before document preview macro, or rather uh, override it, uh, with one of our own. So, essentially, we're going to write our own on before document preview, and we're going to put it in our document level macros instead of having it in the uh, multiple output MCR. Well, it, it, it'll still be in the multiple output MCR, but um, the one that we're going to write is going to uh, will 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 win because it's going to get loaded um, later. So uh, in your on before document preview, you can essentially do whatever you want. Uh, the important thing uh, to remember is that you, um, after you're finished with whatever processing it is that you want to do, you make sure you set that application dot, uh, sorry, active document dot, um, uh, no, it is application dot browser URL property that tells XMetal uh, what file it needs to load into the browser, and that's that's really the only uh, the only hook you need to worry about in order to get this to work. I'm going to do it uh, for the for the demo here. Is I'm actually going to uh, invent a new pre mode, which I'm going to call my HTML, and I'm going to just uh, repeat the same uh, kind of patterns used by the on before document preview in multiple output, but, um, and uh, just do the do my own transformation instead of doing an XSLT transformation on the output. Well. When I'll show you the code in a moment, but the the basic idea in the existing um, uh, on before document preview is that we we check what the current output format is, and if it's HTML, then we do the XSLT transform with HTML output, and then set that browser URL property. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we're having an R now. That's good to know. Um, and uh, otherwise, uh, we check and see if the uh, if that format is set to be PDF. Uh, then, if it is, we do an XSLT transformation with uh, PDF output and set the browser URL property uh, in that case to the PDF temp file. So we're going to add one more bit of code there, which is going to to see if that MO format is my HTML. And if it is, then we're going to do our own custom scripting to produce an HTML temp file and then load that into the browser URL. And um, uh, yeah, you know what? We don't need to look at that code. That's my. That's a, just a glimpse at, at some of the code that I um, that I wrote. That's actually doing the, the transformation. Let's try not to get too bogged down in the details there. So, so demo five, and let's take, take a peek at. Um, so here's the. It's all existing stuff. This is new. Uh, so I've got a new uh, a macro for myself 
to switch my browser mode to my HTML. That's the same as the ones that I had um, before, which is just setting that uh, global variable to be now my HTML. And here is my own macro for uh, on before document preview with the one that's going to override the one in the um, multiple output MCR. This description here is the one that's doing my transformation, so it's just doing a bunch of DOM coding to grab stuff out of the XML document and uh, generate an HTML string, which we will later be writing to a temp file. And that's the code that's writing it all to a temp file. And the code is uh, that is actually doing the logic of deciding which type of preview we want, and uh, we're going to be catching, this is the new bit here, which is catching my new um, uh, browser type, uh, preview type, and, um, and then uh, setting that in the browser um, here. Let's just get work. Here's the code. Let's copy it here. Let's paste it here. And checks metal. I have three output types available, HTML, PDF as before, and my non-XSLT one, which is my new one. I'm so excited to see it work. I'm just going to run that right now. And so now I should see an entirely different output when I do page preview mode from what we've seen before. Yay. Um, so there it is. I guess I could have um, modified that code a little bit so we could have verified that was doing what time, but I expect you all believe me. Okay, so what we've seen today, we've seen how to customize uh, page preview uh, XSLT by adding your own custom file sheet, and it works for both the HTML uh, XSLTs and for the uh, PDF XSLTs. We've shown how there are some hooks and some helper functions available that allow you to make user macros that can generate HTML and PDF uh, previews and, uh, and, and manage the um, sort of user settings around those previews in certain ways. And we've also seen um, a way to where the, where the access point is in the code to be able to easily hook in your own custom type transformation, something if you want, if you want to do something other than a basic XSLT. Okay, so that's it. Are there any questions? There are. <coughs> Only one question to today. Um, Tom, you'd be commended for getting that topic done in 34 minutes. Uh, it's a complex topic. Thank you. The, the question is, <coughs> excuse me, one of our users is wondering, could the custom XSLTs uh, be distributed through XAC files? Uh, yeah, so I thought about that, and um, I didn't actually try this um, when I was doing my testing, but I think they could. Uh, so XMetal has APIs basically to um, extract things out of the ZAC files. Um, and so what you would probably need to do, because they do need to be, uh, in order for page preview to work, those uh, XSLTs do need to be in those, in that uh, specific location with that specific file name. So I think what you would do is you would, um, there's actually an event macro in XMetal um, for uh, catching when the ZAC has been loaded. Uh, and I think that you would probably want to uh, extract the XSLT from the ZAC file um, in script at that point uh, and save out to that uh, correct location with the correct name, and uh, I think that would probably um, I think that would probably do the trick. Okay, I guess that's it. Well, thanks, everyone. So that was the uh, last installment of X Men in 37 minutes. Until our next one, which will be uh, coming out via email to you uh, in the next little while. Um, again, this has been recorded and will be available later today on our website, so if you wish to share it or uh, you think a colleague might find it useful, please feel free to, uh, to access it there. Other than that, we hope you have a great remainder of your week, and we look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you.